Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel is filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you could ever need to know about volleyball. So there are some rule changes that have been implemented for the 24 season and it does have a lot of players in a tizzy. But let's break down these rules so that way we can have a better understanding of what they mean and what it means for us. February of 2024, there were some rule proposals back in the summer, like July-ish, where we were kind of tossing around the idea of having two liberos on a team, okay, and having double contact be permissible on the second contact. That last rule had everybody in a tizzy because they felt as though that invalidated setting. I have the rules right here, so let's review them. On Tuesday, February 20th, NCAA, had a rule change for women's volleyball for the 2024 season and beyond. Number one, small snug fitting nose rings and ear cuffs have been added to the list of acceptable jewelry worn in a match. Two, each team is now allowed to designate two liberos for each set of the match. Only one libero on the court at a time and the a libero position is allowed to serve in one position. Number three, Players may contact the ball more than once on any single attempt on a team's second contact so long as the ball is played to a teammate. And those are the three that I think that are the biggest change. And especially the double contact has been in the volleyball community the most controversial so far. Which I understand the setter's position because you all spend so much time learning how to set properly, learning the foundation of setting, learning how to um, really perform that craft because setting is an art, I tell you, it is an art. So when we first, let's break down one rule that I think is an excellent, excellent rule. So we now introduced that there can be snug fitting nose jewelry and snug fitting earrings. I think this opens up a world of possibilities because back in my day, woo, back in my day, your earrings had to be taken out and I, we know that a lot of, um, players who identify as female we we know a lot of players like to wear jewelry and that is something that it could be just accessory right so this introduction of this new rule does open that up so especially if you have more permanent jewelry like myself earrings that i cannot take out i won't have to take them out um if it's snug fitting. So that probably is up to the referee and it really may be up to the decision of what tournament you're playing. So I would just be cautious of that still um, because you know everything, sometimes things trickle down really slowly when it comes down from the top. So we just wanna make sure that you are prepared and I would hate for you not to be able to play because you know the rules and things haven't trickled down yet. So just be aware of that. Number two, amongst some of the other rules, liberos. The, the, now they're permitting two liberos. I think that this is an excellent thing. And the reason why is because when we're seeing these middle school teams and these high school teams, a lot of the time, libero is a very popular position. And all the times that I've coached, so many players want to be a libero and so many players want to play the libero, right? Or try out as libero. By having two different liberos, this does open up the possibility for more playing time. Um, it does give the opportunity for teams to, if they have two passers who are really both really good, now we have two opportunities. Also, um, it doesn't leave the sole responsibility of that heavy, heavy defense on one person. So it does divvy up. And I know that some people feel like, well, I'm the libero. I worked really hard for it. Yes, you did. You absolutely did. But this increases playing time. And I see this more as, as a benefit when we're looking at that middle school level and that high school level, um, because it does open up an opportunity for more playing time for those players. The third rule is one that is really have the community divided. There are some pros and cons, there's some benefits and there's some not so great benefits of this new implementation of this rule. When we think about setting, setting is such an art in a way that setters, when they do identify setters or a coach identifies them as a setter, the coach will then start to pull them to the side so they can start working on their setter training in which they they still get that formalized volleyball education as everyone else. However, they do get more time setting in drills, in solo practice, one-on-ones, so they can really start to just perfect 
that setting. And a lot of setters are really up in a tizzy because they feel as though all of those years that I spent learning how to set, learning how to really refine this skill, and now it's just completely invalidated. That is not true. Now here's the one thing I want you to take from this. Even though this rule has now changed for the 24 season, this does not mean that it's going to be something that could be a permanent change, right? I think of volleyball as a fluid moving entity in which things can change. However, things can be changed back. Not saying that that's something that's going to happen, but I want you to not use this rule as a, as a way not to continue your setter training because I want you to continue doing that. Being a great setter is a wonderful thing. I wish I was a great setter. Um, but you all are beasts in what you do. Please continue to do that because you are invaluable and learning the set, learning how to set in a formalized way is so important for your progression into later, later teams. So let's say you're in high school and you're a setter and this new rule came out and you're like, okay, well, I don't have to be so serious about setting now. Well, if you want to go and play in college, I'm sure, I'm sure that you still need to have a great foundation and great accuracy for your sets. So continue to set as well as you can. Don't think that now that rule is implemented, you don't have to, right? Now here's the pro of this. Middle school players who are learning how to play volleyball, in some teams, they're very lenient and they're like, okay, I'm not gonna call a double because I know that you guys are in seventh grade and you're learning, right? This gives the opportunity for those players to have a safe space in which they can progress and learn and they can continue to do that without feeling and having the fear of doubling. And teams who are high school who are a little bit lower ranked, um, this also gives the setter the opportunity to play to the best of her ability without the fear of doubling. So there are pros and cons to both sides of this and I just want you to look at the whole picture versus looking at, okay, so now setting's just over. It's not over. This rule, and I, I can't speak for, I can't speak for the organization. I can just give my opinion about it. I think that this rule really is really to improve the playing time, the quality of play for these players who are in these younger groups. So that way they can, number one, have players play more and not ride the bench but also have players have more confidence to play and not feel like, oh, every time I set double, every time double, you know? So there are pros and cons. This is just my opinion on this, you know? I, I do know it's a very heated debate. I would love to know more about your opinion in the comments. Please like, comment, subscribe. What do you think? What do you think about the new rule, the new top three that I picked out, rules that have been proposed and implemented? All right, I hope that you like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.